The community came together for a ceremony on the 21st anniversary of 9-11 to honor first responders and remember the lives lost on that tragic day. Residents enjoyed music, games, beer, and brats during the DDA's second annual Oktoberfest in downtown Lake Orion. Broadway Dance Company hosted an open house to show off their newly expanded facility on the Pier Road. And the Lake Orion Dragons traveled to Oxford to face their crosstown rivals and to try to reclaim the double a trophy they lost last year. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Sunday, September 11th, marked the 21st anniversary of the tragic events that claimed the lives of almost 3,000 people in New York, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Somber ceremonies took place across the country, including one right here in Lake Orion. The Orion Veterans Memorial was the site of an emotional ceremony that not only remembered the lives lost on 9-11, but also honored the brave first responders who charged into dangerous situations on a regular basis. Former Orion Township Fire Chief Bob Smith welcomed those in attendance and invited speakers to share their memories of the day that changed the world. It has now been two decades since the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center, Pentagon, and the crash of Flight 93. For most who are old enough to remember, it is a day that is impossible to forget. Many of our new firefighters here in Orion and Oxford were in grade school or weren't even born at the time. The first symbol was the first responders, police, fire, and EMS personnel running into harm's way which was a symbol of the greatness of America and the greatness of the American people. We can never forget our men and women in harm's way today, still fighting against those who plan and execute terrorist attacks. We as a nation must remain vigilant and dedicated to our nation and to our citizens. Don't ever forget. And then in August of 2000, we visited the World Trade Center Twin Towers. I don't know if many of you have ever, was ever able to visit that magnificent building, buildings. We took our, our trip and we stayed at the Marriott, which was on the complex. We then toured the Trade Center. We went to the elevator and were met by those wonderful employees that were happy to see us as visitors. We went up the elevator to in the South Tower to the observation deck. When you went up to the observation deck, it was lively. There were many employees that you would meet. You'd see their fa beautiful faces, and you had a little chit chat about this these magnificent buildings. So there were so many people that that I met, beautiful everyday people that just want to go to work every day and live their lives who may have perished. So while I was sitting at home while all this was going on, I thought of them. Uh, did they survive? Well, and I, and I will probably never know, I will never know. The best thing I remember, which was, again was stated prior, was right or wrong, up or down, left or right, whatever your political ideology, everyone banded together. Everyone work together for a common cause to help and support each other, especially to help to support troops and first responders, especially those who made the ultimate sacrifice as they all want to do things, or do things, excuse me, that they don't want to do. It proves that we can do it, proves that we've done it before, and it proves we can do it again. So please never forget, thank you, and God bless. Later, VFW Post 334 Commander James Hubbard presented awards to EMT Kyle Cameron, Deputy Jeff Sauve of the Oakland County Sheriff's Office, and Firefighter of the Year Justin Diener. But we really do appreciate everything that these gentlemen do for our community. Uh, something that was happened right after 9 11, uh, the VFW wanted to support every community. So all over the United States, this is happening in all our presentations to uh, the EMTs, firefighters, and officers of the year. So we do appreciate their, their knowledge and all their uh, 
toughness that they provide our community. The ceremony came to a close with a powerful message from Pastor Dave Gerber, who acts as chaplain for the Oxford Police Department. Remind us that the things that divide us are not insurmountable, that we can overcome, we can be united, and we can make the world a better place so we don't need another memorial and we don't need another family saying goodbye to a loved one. May your love re re unite us. May we find grace in differences and patience in disagreements. May we seek first to understand, then be understood. And may the actions in response to the horrifying acts of September 11th remind us of what we can be, once again, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Judge Michael Warren, who co-founded Patriot Week, announced at the ceremony that the community is invited to come out for the Stars and Stripes Bash, scheduled to take place on Sunday, September 18th at Orion Township's Wellwood Amphitheater. The event runs from noon to 5 p.m. and is free to the public. For more information, visit patriotweek.org. Oktoberfest is a German tradition that goes back more than 200 years. Of course, beer lovers across America have joined in on the fun, and Lake Orion is no exception. On Saturday, September 10th, Lake Orion residents were encouraged to don their Lederhosen and come out to GDA's second annual Oktoberfest. The parking lot near Children's Park was closed off, as visitors arrive to enjoy food, games, music, and lots and lots of beer. In just two short years, Oktoberfest has become the DDA's largest fundraiser of the year, and not only does the DDA benefit, but other local nonprofit organizations benefit as well. The American Legion has been bartending for us all day. They have, they have taken care of our needs in the bar, and the tips are going to the American Legion. Um, we had the Art Center came and they served for us um, during the dinner. And um, the Lions Club, they set up our perimeter for us. You, there's, you know, you have to follow the rules and be very careful and the Lions Club knows how to do it. So we have them set up our perimeter and they're coming in tonight and they're doing a 50-50 raffle. Okay. And they benefit from the 50-50? Absolutely, they benefit. Yes, and all the charities that they, the many, many, many charities that the Lions Club um, support, they all benefit. One of the more popular events was a Stein holding contest where women and men competed for medals and prizes. Two minutes and 59 seconds. Oh, she's going. And we have the winner. Stay here, stay here. Uh, uh, The fundraiser allows the DDA to plan projects and host other events throughout the year. Director Molly Lalone told us about a major project that's currently in the works. This is the DDA's main fundraiser, and this main fundraiser helps us pay for the events for the rest of the year, and, um, and that allows us to use our other funds to do very, very big projects. And this is brand new. We have a huge project that we are about to do. We are trying to purchase the Lake Orion Lumber Yard. Along the Paint Creek Trail, we're gonna add some more park space. We're gonna add a lot more parking, public parking for the downtown. And we're hoping to be able to um, add some buildings that would extend our downtown right onto M24, just visually. So big project, big project. And that's why these kind of fundraisers are important because the events are important for our businesses and for our customers, it's exciting. Um, but we wanna be able to use our funds very wisely. Next up on the DDA's calendar is the Halloween extravaganza scheduled for Wednesday, October 19th in Children's Park. The popular event encourages little ones to dress up in costume and go trick-or-treating in the park. For more information, visit downtownlakeorion.com. Throughout the year, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce provides numerous networking opportunities for its members. Recently, the Chamber hosted a luncheon that featured some pretty inspiring women. On Wednesday, August 31st, the Orion Area Chamber hosted its third annual Women in Business Conference at Addison Oaks Buell Estate in Leonard, Michigan. Those in attendance were treated to presentations from three successful women who tried to uplift and inspire others. 
Our members were asking for something like this uh, a couple years ago in a survey that we did. Um, they wanted to have some sort of female-focused or women-focused event, and that's what we did. We put something together with uh, their ideas and their thoughts and their needs in mind. Um, I think it was just uh, being inspired by, by strong women in business and being um, surrounded by other women who can help you in your business you know, or your organization. We talked a lot about mentorship today and a lot about just kind of like going forward for it and, and not you know worrying about any what the outcome is just just get out there and do it so I think it's just kind of an inspirational thing more than anything those invited to speak included Carol Kane senior producer and host of Michigan Matters a public affairs program that airs on CBS award-winning WDIV news anchor and investigative journalist Karen Drew and consumers energy community affairs manager Lauren Royston who has over 20 years of experience in community relations and economic development for someone starting their business, make sure it's something that you're passionate about. Um, everyone has a different route, a different road that they travel to get to that. But if you're wanting to start a business, first make sure it's something that you're passionate about. Do your research, learn about you know your customer, your market, whatever it is. But then the most important thing and what I was trying to share today is don't doubt yourself. If you can conceptualize that this business is something that's important to you and it's going to be a big thing, then that's what you go with. That's what you rely on. You you build the framework, you make it happen, and you're able to happen. You're more than capable, and you have everything to make it happen for yourself. In addition to the annual conference, the Chamber offers a monthly networking opportunity for women known as Orient Women Leaders, or OWLs for short. We're trying to get back up to a monthly meeting. Um, we're doing another one in September, um, and then we're focusing this year on philanthropy. So we're doing a lot of stuff uh, highlighting the Daisy Project or the Lions Club and having people sort of help with their, their projects for the holiday time. Um, but funny enough that we've heard this so many times today in the speeches that we were talking about mentoring, um, that's going to be our focus for 2023. So those are, those are targeted networking groups that will happen once a month for the um, Orient Women Leaders. The next meeting is scheduled to take place on the evening of September 15th. The location is yet to be determined, followed by a breakfast meeting on October 25th. For more information, visit OrientAreaChamber.com. Before moving into the Orient Center in 2012, ONTV occupied space in a shopping plaza on M24. Broadway Dance Company moved into the space vacated by ONTV and ended up tripling their square footage over the summer. On Thursday, September 8th, Broadway Dance Company hosted their 11th annual open house with free dance classes, refreshments, and a raffle. Returning visitors may have been surprised to see the dance studio looks quite a bit different than it did a year ago. When their neighbor, AAA Insurance, vacated their office space in June, Broadway Dance not only took over that space, but they also expanded into the space once occupied by Bars and Blades, who moved over one address. After working all summer to get it ready, Broadway Dance went from 2,400 square feet to 7,500 square feet of studio space. Uh, Broadway Dance was created to give every child who wants to take dance an opportunity to learn and learn um, as a beginner all the way up to an advanced dancer that's going to leave us and attend college or dance professionally. So our, all of our teachers are certified or have gone to college. They've been teaching for many years, decades, some of them. They have children of their own, so they know the importance of patience and kindness. And we offer dance classes in ballet, jazz, lyrical, tap, hip hop, acro. Um, we have adult classes now too, so that's great for the parents so they can enjoy tap and jazz and we're going to be adding a hip hop class as well. With the expansion, Broadway Dance Company now has four studios for classes. You'll often find dancers out in the community throughout the year as they take part in community events like Dragon in the Lake, the Lake Orion Three Light at Ceremony, and the Light at Christmas Parade. Dancers also perform in two recitals at Lake Orion High School. As a matter of fact, they celebrated 10 years of dancing at their annual recital in June. The ultimate goal is for kids to have fun. That's our first priority is to make sure that they are walking out and they're feeling positive and confident and happy. But what I've seen it do for kids is have friends outside of school. It teaches them to manage their time. It teaches them to stand with confidence to walk into a room and be able to perform in front of an audience and um, to just be so proud of what their body can physically do. For more information, you can call 248 693 2555 
or visit broadwaydanceco.com. The Lake Orion Dragons varsity football team opened their season on August 25th by traveling to Utica Eisenhower, where they came away with a 42-17 loss. The following week, they hosted the visiting Oak Park Knights and managed to turn things around with an impressive 45-15 win. The Dragons then headed north to Oxford on September 9th, hoping to reclaim the double-O trophy they lost to their crosstown rival Wildcats last year. Did they pull it off? Owen TV's Joe Johnson has the highlights. On the evening of Friday, September 9th, the Oxford Wildcats hosted the Lake Orion Dragons in the annual battle for the double-O trophy, which Oxford took home last year after a win at Dragon Stadium. Both teams headed into the game with a one and one record, hoping to snag a win in the OAA Red Division. The Dragons kicked off to the Wildcats, and with Dominique Cassis under center, Oxford's first drive of the game ate up most of the entire first quarter. The Wildcats ended up settling for a field goal, and the Dragons began their first drive with less than three minutes left in the quarter. In the second quarter, the Dragons began a drive that culminated with a 15-yard rushing touchdown from sophomore quarterback T.R. Hill, and the Dragons take the lead 7-3 with less than 10 minutes left in the first half. Let's go to the third. Following a Dragons three and out, the Wildcats have the ball near midfield. Cassis hands off to Eli Tabor, who finds a hole, and he is gone 43 yards into the end zone to whip Wildcat Nation into a frenzy. The PAT was good, and Oxford regains the lead 10-7. That touchdown seemed to serve as a wake-up call for the Dragons. On the ensuing drive, Lake Orion marched the ball all the way down the field. Running back Billy Roberson takes the handoff at the 5, and he bulldozes his way into the end zone. The extra point was good, and the Dragons are back on top, 14-10, with 2.32 left in the third. Let's go to the fourth. Following a 31-yard gain by Roberson, the Dragons are facing a first and 10 at the Wildcats 15. Roberson takes the handoff, and he is determined to find the end zone. His 15-yard score puts the Dragons up 21-10. The Dragons defense held the Wildcats at bay and with the game winding down, Lake Orion padded their lead with a 20-yard scamper from quarterback T.R. Hill. A face mask penalty was declined. The extra point was good and the game ended with a 28-10 victory for the Dragons with the double O trophy returning to the Lake Orion High School trophy case for a year. I caught up with head coach Chris Bell after the game. Rivalry game, obviously. Um, so a lot of you know community bragging rights. You know it's good for our guys. Our guys know their year. They brought the trophy home, um, but it's always they're always hard fought. I mean Oxford play the heck of a game. They're tough as can be. They're well coached. Uh, gave us some problems. I'm just proud of my kids and how resilient they were. They hung in there. They kept playing and they got the job done. The Dragons return home on September 16th to host Rochester Adams, then hit the road again to face Stony Creek on September 23rd. In Oxford, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV Sports. Thanks, Joe, and congratulations to the Dragons. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ON TV News. On behalf of the hardworking ON TV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.